Good morning, you guys. Brad and I are here in WeWAC this morning. Sorry about my voice, I'm struggling with a cold today. We're heading out to Yifki to drop off some of the school materials. Remember last year how we were raising money for the school out there in Yifki? Well, today we're actually flying a lot of materials in and in May is when they're gonna be starting the new building. I think three buildings that they're gonna be building. So let's join along, let's load up and get out of here. So we're just loading up a couple of things in here just for ballast weight. We've got some dog food and then we'll also have um, a thing of propane to go out there as well. And we're just putting that as ballast because we're taking out like siding and stuff like the siding you see over here on this building um, for the school. So it takes up the whole floor of the Kodiak and I think we're taking nine foot stuff. So it's going to go all the way from the front all the way back here to about or in here. So. So to be able to like counteract all the weight that we're gonna have inside the plane, we need a little bit underneath in the pod just to keep our CG forward enough. And this is gonna be basically right on the line. I'll show you guys later. We're gonna be on our aft CG right on the line, but that's good enough. We're still in the envelope. Yeah, get rid of the oh, 680 and then just put 67. So we can put 659 of the sheets and then just take divide that by whatever. What, what size are they? 8 kg. So just take 659 divided by 8 and see how many that is. Okay. And then that will tell us how many sheets we can put in there. All right, Brad's just now finishing tying the load down. We're gonna go, it's now 8.15 in the morning. We've got 43 minute flight out to Yifki. And hopefully, according to the weather, there should only be a little bit of clouds out there in theory, but we'll see once we get there. This is Brad's first time landing on a sloped airstrip out in Yifki, so I'm excited to get him going on Class C airstrips now. Now that we just finished loading 727 kgs, we've got to unload it out there and then come back and do it all again two times yeah, I'm already like drenched and it's just 8.25 in the morning. out there this is a satellite uh, we're heading out of Wewak all the way down to this little heart down here it looks like it's it's uh, partially cloudy scattered maybe I don't know and then looking at the clouds low clouds again there's gonna be probably broken clouds out there but there's really nothing we can do at this moment we're gonna be getting out there at 9 o'clock so let's look at 9 yeah it's looking a lot better at 9 um, just the brown just showing that there's not a lot of clouds out there, so that's encouraging. Um, especially because it's Brad's first time landing out there, I don't really want to have to be working weather in the pattern. Um, and the circuit, because it's a pretty tight circuit, and it's just one more thing to add to his workload that I don't want to have to deal with, or have for him to deal with. All stations, WeWAC 126 decimal 7, Kodiak, never particular echo, taxi for runway 28. It's a great start to the day, isn't it? You know how I was talking about uh, fatigue levels just yesterday on that video? Just flying IMC weather and why I, I, people ask all the time, why do you always just go around the stuff, not just through it? This is why, because we just, we just loaded 730 kgs and we're gonna unload 730 kgs and we're gonna come back and do it again and then we're gonna unload it again. So what is that, like 3,000, almost 3,000 kgs? Uh, so that's like over 6,000 something pounds every day and not every day do we have to do this much but that's why we really think about how what could possibly be fatiguing to us and then get that out so that we um, can do this five days a week all right clear over here hey what since loading this aircraft i've definitely worked more on my core <laughs> you're hunched over in the back of the 
Oh, I know. Airplane or you're yeah, sitting that's... down on your knees loading the cargo pod. That's the worst. Is these ones? This is like I was saying to Brad. This is the absolute worst type of um, loading. Oh, shit. 1540 for 1590, rotating 63. All stations, WEWAC 126, decimal 7, November Tango Echo is on the roll, runway 28. We'll be on track, 205 degrees, climbing, and we'll be climbing 12,000. November Tango Echo, WEWAC. 1040 for 1590, rotating 60. Ignition inlet. Did you do a governor check? I did not. All right, we can just do it right here, at, like right before you go, and right. then just let go, and then just get going. Okay. It's Thank some, you. It's hard to remember that. I always forget it when I have an overnight here as well. Okay. Cool. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Ignition, inlet, prop condition. Ups 20. Verified. Fuel. Harnesses are locked. Or we'll do a governor check real quick. Instruments are in the green. Airspeed alive. ITT 720. Instruments are still in the green. There's 63 for rotate. Doesn't take a lot of back pressure when our CG's so far back, is it? <laughs> nope, takes some. That was down, Jim, though. All right, I'm going to mute myself while I just talk about our weight balance real quick so you can do whatever you need to do. All right, I just muted myself so I can talk to you guys about our weight balance that we use. We use a weight balance app, just the generic one that we have on the iOS store. It's just one that we've used for a few years now. And you can plug in your specific airplane as far as like all your, you know, points and stations. And I can't even think right now. But either way, this is what it looks like. Let me screenshot it for you guys so I can throw it up on the screen. Uh, Brad 95, I'm 90, and we have minus 26 on all these rows, and that's because we've taken all the seats off. We have no seats on board. But we ended up putting 67 kgs in our front pod, like I was saying earlier, is we have to have some weight in the pod if we want to put a bunch of weight up here, evenly spaced out. We put 660 in the cabin, so 165 divided by four, we had 1,000 pounds. So you can see, we're right close to our app CG. We could have gone just a tiny bit more, and then as we burn off fuel on our flight out there, 43 minutes, we'll actually be moving it a little bit forward. So we're still within, well within our envelope. I actually prefer to fly with an FCG because it makes like your round out area, like round out, and then also like rotating out of these in some of these places, just a lot easier. You don't have to put as much back pressure on it, especially because we're going to be traveling through a lot of times where the grass is not very cut very well. So it's just one less thing that you have to do. Like when you're pulling up and getting the, the pressure off the nose wheel through taller grass or just muddy or soft grass, just makes your life a little bit easier because all the weight's already in the back helping you out. All right, so you've already flown the pattern a couple of times out there in Yifki, and then I've just taken over on short final. So you already know kind of the key points, but I'm just gonna brief you again on those just to refresh you and hopefully, like I was saying, I really hope that there's not a lot of clouds in this circuit because it's kind of fairly tight and it just adds one more thing that you're going to have to worry about and your go around, you're actually potentially have to do it differently if there are a bunch of clouds. All right, so we're coming in pretty steep coming in from that direction, you know, uh -huh. and we have that ridge where there's a couple of like one, one trees. We're going to cross over that at 4,300, which is giving us a little bit of room, but a fair enough room that we don't have to worry about anything. We want to turn at 3,800 to 3,850 at the turning base, and then 3,650, um, which is just 400 feet above um, touchdown zone. Okay. And there's two ridges, and we wait to start turning so that we're turning directly in the middle of the last ridge. Don't like wait to the ridge to start your turn. We want to like turn so that we're kind of rolling out right in the middle of that ridge. Okay. Let me write that stuff down real quick so it'll settle in my mind a little bit better. You said 43, 4, which is traffic pattern altitude. Um, yep. 
It's just like 50 feet above, but it's just enough. But if you do 40 to 50, you're really close to the trees. Okay. And if there's any type of clouds, anything that you're worrying about, like it's just a good, that's one area that you could get distracted because you're going through a lot of other checklist stuff and stuff. And you said downwind to base was 3,800? Like 3,800 to 3,850, something like that. And then turning final was 3650. 30, which is 400 feet. Which is 400 feet, feet above touchdown. We're going to go, like, um, what I do for this one is my aiming point is the first cone in from the threshold. So you have got the end, the threshold ones, and then the first one in. I aim for that one. It's a fairly long, I mean, what, 590 meters long. So it's, it's pretty long as far as bush airships go. And it's a 7% slope, and the grass is, I wouldn't say draggy, but I get it in reverse just because there's some pretty big undulations where you just start, like, if you're going really fast, it's just really rough. It's just almost bouncing, kind of. Okay. So I get it in reverse and slow down, and then I bring my power back in to get up the hill. Okay. Uh, we're you're gonna, slowing down to, like, 40 knots, yeah. and then you're keeping we at that point. Yeah. Okay. I keep it full reverse until I see 40, then we come okay. out of reverse, and then I start adding power again to get going back up the hill. It gets a little bit more manageable just so you're not bouncing up the hill. Right. And we're going to, and we're gonna like brief this out loud also when we get there, is that we're gonna match the slope before we pull the power. Because typically you're wanting to like, you know, pull power flare kind of thing, where this is like, you're almost like going to your spot, rounding out, you're matching the slope, now pull power and continue on in that flare. It's almost like a here, pull power and continuing flare. That's gonna oh. feel really weird. Uh, it's not as weird as you think because you're like, you're kind of almost just going, oh, I don't wanna hit the ground, I'm just gonna like try to match the ground and then you're just, okay, there we go, that looks more right. Okay. Um, it's 7% slope, so I personally don't really add any on 7%, maybe one knot, maybe. Right. I really kind of feel it more when it's like 9% sloping up where you actually have to start adding some. But we can add one knot to whatever our V-Ref is. It's not that much, but it just helps with, you're gonna start bleeding off your inertia pretty quick by the time you are starting to round out and then you pull power, but if, yeah. So we'll do one knot extra on top. Wow, 20 knots crosswind. No, I saw 17 at a lower altitude. Oh. I mean, we're pointing way over here with our flight predictor on track. And I'll just follow you in on it. Um, and again, like on short final, uh, even when I'm by myself all the time, I actually brief myself out loud, like match the slope before pulling power. Just because we're not coming into these sloped runways all the time. Um, and it just kind of helps solidify it on short final. Oh yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Oh, we haven't, no, we haven't done a lot of these, but yeah, that's what I'd like to start seeing you doing. I haven't, not that I'm not seeing this, but I want to see you plan out as we're coming into these kind of valleys where there is a little bit more, it's confined space. I want you to kind of plan out how can I enter this so that I can do one big loop and then enter over my field on crosswind at the altitude and the speeds that I want. So that I'm not just like, so that you're not, not saying you are, but not so you're just like entering and then going, oh, I'm just gonna turn here, no, I'm gonna turn over here and then like, I have an idea how can you do it one easy go yeah. and slowing down in your turn, maybe even putting your flaps in so that you're rolling out crosswind maybe at 100 knots, 10 degrees of flaps, ready to go and still slowing down, you know? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I guess it would make sense since we've got 5,000 feet to lose and it's such a short amount of time just to go ahead and put, put 10 degrees of flaps in as I'm coming over the ridge, starting to slow down at that point so then it's easier to lose that altitude. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. Okay. And just be super aware because you're, the tendency is just to like push over. We got 10 degrees, we got full flaps. Basically, if I can get over my ridge, that's where like my point is, where I'm like scraping my 500 feet over top of the ridge, top four, 10 degrees, but then just don't overspeed the flaps because it's you're looking to see where you want to go and you're planning it out and it's pretty easy to forget, especially if you go 20 degrees and you're just kind of pushing over to get down to your pattern. Okay. So if there are clouds in the pattern, and we're gonna have to really think out very well. Can we do the pattern or the circuit with the clouds as is? 
we need to adjust anything as far as our altitudes or we're, like turning final, we're not gonna we're not gonna budge on turning final. Like we can amend how we do our downwind or crosswind or base, but like turning final, I don't want to have to have Alpha that. Number two, more speed. No reported traffic. OCTA. Don't want to have to change that. We really can't go lower than that, can we? Because it's not above the ridge over here. We can go another 100 feet lower okay. and still be within our ops, like 300 feet. It'd be stabilized by 300 feet. So if we were to turn at 300 feet, hold our 300 feet until we go down normally, then we can still do that. Uh, as far as where I want to turn, like I don't want to have to turn early around a cloud or something. Yeah. Because especially the first time, like maybe if you've been in here 20 times, it might be a little bit different story, but for the first time, I'd like it to be everything exactly the same as you'd always do it. Yeah. Okay. Man, there's a lot of clouds. <laughs> what a pain. So I'm thinking, go ahead and start the descent. Um, well, that, let's just look at that first. We've got, it doesn't, a ridge over there that we can see that we could potentially start heading down. Let's maybe do that. We've got that ridge in sight. And towards this one that's yeah. kind of peeking through. Uh, the one way over here, yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's just plow down to that. We know we can get over that so that we don't get completely over the ridge over the top and then have to start for 12,000 or potentially there might, I have no idea, I can't tell. There might be even a full on layer, but remember how there's like this, this long valley you can see here, light uh -huh. coming all the way up. Yeah. So if we can get over the ridge there, but you're going to have to push down quite a bit to get over that. And we can just follow I'm that. About this first ridge right Yeah, here. where we can okay. see the definite line. Okay. We know that's for sure at least open enough, at least it was from the perspective back there. Now that we're coming down, it looks like there's more, but. Okay, our current aircraft weight is 7020. We're gonna burn another 50 pounds, potentially. We'll just, just say 7,000. 7, so oh, 74. that's 74. Let's add one more to that, so just 75. That'll be for our matching slope? Yeah. Okay, so we're at 75 already anyway. Yep. All right, well, we're seeing a couple. I still say that that's probably going to be our best bet because we will be able to follow that ridge line coming all the way down and around the corner. Okay, the abort point is going to be like halfway down, maybe halfway down final. At the river. So turning final, the river. wings level, about 10 seconds. Okay, now we're going around if we have to. I'm going to start slowing down. So we can it's like see it's plenty just scattered of, in there. Plenty so. of space on the All other right, side. Um, we'll go through it and then we'll set our OBS and start up everything else because now we're getting pretty close. Okay. It looks like from this angle you're going to be very close to the bottom of these clouds. Like very close. I'll get you down a little faster. Yeah. Hey, we've got a 9,000 set. Now I'm going to go ahead and bump it down to 43. Just beyond this, I'll get my OBS set. Or you're saying do it before? No. Once we're this close to train, just keep your eyes up, up and out. Yeah. That sounds great. Were, were you saying before? before uh, yeah, I was saying close? wait till we get past it, and okay. then we'll do everything else. Okay. All right. Now I'd start be bringing my power back in, just to, because we're below this, and we just want to have. If we do need to just go around, we're like ready, and it's already half spooled up, kind of thing. Okay. All right. Now the valley's looking actually really good, so this is awesome. It looks like so much, so crappy before coming in. Yeah. We're coming down to this altitude across this ridge. Okay, so I'm gonna come over to the right. Looks like the the airstrip is gonna be just over here. We've got this ridge here, it's on the other side of that. Okay. So there are some clouds right there. But they look high 500. enough though. Like they don't look like they're gonna be a problem. Okay, so we're just gonna continue coming on down. Now we got completely wide open. Now let's finish everything we can with our checklist and get our OBS in and anything else that's going to be helpful while there's yes. not much going on. And it was 1-1. One, one. Yes, checklist is complete aside from flaps. We're going to wait. Once I see the airstrip, it's just beyond this ridge right here, right? 
Uh, it's on the other. It's right on the other side of this ridge right here. So okay. if you go around those clouds, uh -huh. you could fly kind of back at an angle right over top of the airfield really easy. This is the time I'd be calling up Moresby because you're not in the circuit yet, but you're not doing anything except going straight down okay. as opposed to like now calling him in on your base kind of thing. Okay. Moresby, 6538, November Tango Echo in the circuit, Gifki, call after landing. November Tango Echo. See that little house down there on this little ridge? It's just on the other side of that. Okay. A little clearing where they're making the house. Okay. And we've got 20 degrees of flaps. We'll get full flaps in prior to turning final. All right, start your turn now. Make it a pretty bank so you can see down in there really well. Um, oh, yeah. All right, now it looks pretty good. So one cone in is about where we're looking for. Okay. Like, right. So 43, just shy of that. There's still a little clearance. 43 feels better. So now we're going to go ahead and turn towards that land. Oh, just keep coming over this way and then slow down to your downwind speed. All those little trees, the little 1-1 one -one trees, huh? that's where you're going to eventually come all the way out here to lose your altitude to so your 38 over there. Okay. It doesn't have to be just like your cookie cutter circuit. Just do whatever you have to do to get to 38 by that point. Okay. We're going just inside of those trees. That's right. Okay. A little closer though. Pretty close to them actually. There's 38. We're a little right. bit fast. There we go. Now's a great time got two ridges. We want a 500 final on the second ridge so that we're in the middle of it. Right. 25 knots. And we're, we want to be 30, 36. 50, so hold your altitude. And we'll go full flaps. Okay. Well, flaps, checklist complete, turn final. But we're going to call after landing. Slowing down to 75. You're right of center line. Hey, we're a little bit fast on the descent. You know, it's a headwind. Airspeed's good. 500. Committed. To a center line, correcting. A slow, correcting. Go down here because we're gonna um we're just gonna throw the siding off the side just for the school down here so as i've told you guys before i've done a video out here for the school out here we were raising money i think i can maybe leave a link down below for a fund um, where they're raising money for the school watch out dog <laughs> there we go and if you want to get towards this school, we raised up 14 grand last year and then more money has come in. They're building three buildings down here and they're going to be using this building next to us as well um, for a school. We've got a printer for them out here as well. Dropped off some a bunch of rugby balls that were donated as well. Man, that dog is just determined to get hit, isn't it? Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Um, this is Brad. Yeah, first landing at a sloped runway here. We, we haven't had, we would have been doing this early. We just haven't had the opportunity really to come out to these places that much. So. Anyway, give this video a thumbs up, and for Brad, see you guys next time.